there and welcome to Travels with Jordi. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordi. All the while fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. projects going on in here today you will see I have the uh, power electrical panel off again because I'm making small modifications <laughs> before we actually get started into that which is what we're going on strong now because wiring is the name of the game this week uh, of course the helm is installed although it's coming back out again um, but it'll be wired up this week we'll get the engine wired up as well as some of this panel stuff um, but before I can do any of that I have to do some carpentry I have to finish that panel and I have to make some sawdust and I can't close that door to the aft cabin right now because the door needs to be undercut to fit over the new step. So let's start with that. Now this is something I have not been looking forward to do, but it's got to be done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can't quite cut far enough. Beautiful. Ah. And the door should shut now. I love it. Okay, I've got my four pieces for the sides of the box and uh, now I have to cut them on a bevel or a miter bevel I would call this and put them together and clean it up and attach it. Okay, so those are the easy cuts. The first one on each side. Now we got to do some measuring. <laughs> Okay, now there's my mark. I'm going to put the bevel down in this direction and a good way to make sure that you make both sides the same is just cut them together. There we go. Looks good. Let's glue this up. Okay, so I'm going to glue and screw um, these mitered corners, these beveled corners, but I'm going to tack them with my little brad nailer. And for those of you who maybe have joined in recently, and I'm not familiar with this thing. This is a KDX, just happens to be the brand it is, 23 gauge uh, pin nailer. And let me show you, the nails are these teeny, teeny, tiny headless pins. Uh, they have put an arrow on them uh, so you know which way to put them in the gun because they have no head. Um, this is one of my favorite tools by a long shot and you'll see in a minute. It just, for tacking things, it has no force to it. It doesn't shake anything. It just, and there's a pin in there instantly. Plus. It sinks the head just slightly below the surface and the fibers just sort of close up again and it's almost invisible. Almost. Anyway, uh, I'll also be putting some screws in to make it super solid later, but in lieu of having a big complex clamping arrangement, I can just whip this together very, very, very quickly. Okay, so let's uh, look at some pretty sides here. That looks really pretty right there. And uh, for this one, let's use the nice red side, even though we can take out the burn. Okay, so that's gonna go just like that. Now it's just the glue up. Okay, easy peasy. Okay, so this is a very rudimentary, quick little wooden box. The true fact that I'm using mahogany for this is a bit generous, uh, but I didn't, we're gonna see the edge grain of it and I didn't really wanna see plywood. Okay, now there's a little hack. If this didn't lay flat, well, it doesn't quite lay flat. Okay, just, just a little bit. So what's happening is they're a little bit bowed. So this joint is a little open at the bottom and uh, 
uh, tight at the top. So I can actually just tighten this screw down here at the bottom a little bit, tighten this one at the top, tighten this one at the bottom, and tighten this one at the top. And that will make a difference to making sure that sits flat. Excellent. All right. So because this is screwed, we don't have to wait to continue to work on it as long as we don't stress it too much. Um, it's going to be attached to the panel um, with uh, pocket screws, with Craig pocket screws down on an angle in here. Only on the side ones. If you look carefully, I've actually made the box taller than the panel in behind and that's because I want a little extra room for wires at the top and the bottom and it'll also mean I have access to the screws that hold the whole panel to the inside of the boat in case I want to be able to remove it although I don't know if that's the way it, anyway it's what I did so some pocket screws all right if you're not familiar with pocket screws um, this is the Craig brand I think they're basically invented it although there's other people doing it now what it does it's a jig that you clamp your wood into with this clamp and it has a guide for this special shouldered drill basically it's a skinny drill at the end and then a shoulder and then a bigger drill a half inch or so so what that does it comes popping out of the side of the guide here and puts let's take this little piece of wood here and clamp it up in here. I don't know if this is actually set for three quarter inch right now. Good enough. And as you can imagine, as this comes through here, it's gonna go in on an angle through the piece of wood and the little tip will just barely pop out the bottom, meaning now it's very easy to drive a screw into the side, toe screwing, so to speak, if you're familiar with that terminology. Um, this is a really great thing. Now, it leaves a, an exposed kind of strange oval hole. You can get little plugs for it. I've never bothered trying to do it in finish work. I only do this in places where you're never going to see it again. But it is darn handy for putting together certain types of cabinetry like this. All right. So you can see a little oval hole there and it the light and it pops out dead center in the bottom there for the screw to go into whatever you're screwing into works really well okay done so we can put this aside for a bit and let that glue start to set up just a little and while we make up a front panel Okay. Lift properly, Peter. Okay, so this is the front panel of the um, main electrical panel and it's going to have all the breakers on it and switches and meters and stuff like that. But it needs to open up, let's do it this way for now, open up so that I have access to the back to make all the connections and inside where all these goodies will live. Okay, so that needs a hinge obviously. <laughs> And I'm going to use a piano hinge, as I often do. No more um, cheap uh, brass colored tinfoil for me. This is a heavy duty stainless steel one. I don't mind that it's stainless down in there. So I'm gonna put, now this is a bit of a sin, um, this piano hinge on the, uh, let's put it the right way, on the end grain of this plywood. Now this is marine ply. It is really, really good stuff. And I'm gonna use really long screws and it's pretty low impact, but it's still a bit of a sin. Yeah, no doubt. Anyway, and to line it up, I'm just opening the hinge or closing it or whatever, setting it at 90 degrees so that it holds it very square against the piece of plywood. And then when I 
choose to line it up with the door, I'll set the pot. You'll see what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. Let's just get this on here. You'll always remember my pushy, springy, loaded, thingy, madooey, gobby here. Now I'm going to start with small screws just for the test fit. Okay, and to line it up on here, I'm just going to set it up so this face is flush with the edge of the frame. And then the advantage of that is when I flip it over, the hinge will be higher on the frame than on the door panel, so the door panel will be recessed slightly. All right, now I fully expect this to uh, at least jam up a little bit as I close this up, but, oh, I've got, I, forgot, I forgot to take into account the lost material for the hinge. Anyway, easily, I just gotta rip that edge off. Okay, well, it actually fits very, very nicely, and it is just, as you can see, a good uh, 3 16ths or so lower. Okay, I think that's gonna be very, very nice, except I have to remove a little more material. How does that fit? Just a little snug, but that's okay. A little sanding will make that perfect. Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm actually glad it's a bit tight because that saves me, um, makes it a little bit easier for the next job, which is to put a little door stop on the inside. So basically once the reveal is accurate all the way around like that, then I can flip it over and um, Prepare to put a door stop in right in here. And now I have a door stop for that. Okay, and now we'll take it apart and send it. All right, everyone's favorite penance. You know what's coming next? My favorite tongue up. All right, now I'll come back in uh, oh, an hour or two and uh, rub that down again. In fact, I'm gonna give this another rub down right now. Plywood always seems to absorb so much more. Now the plywood uh, looks much darker than the solid mahogany right now, but that's just because it soaks it up so fast. This will come to that color in time. After all, this is the same wood as that. Okay. Well, good morning everyone. I am really, really pleased with the way this turned out. Um, let's put it back together along with a little knob so we can open and close it and remount it in the forecastle. All right, so I'm gonna put this nice little hand rub bronze uh, knob onto there. You know, I'll never say it's one of my favorite tools, but it is handy the way these cheap uh, wire strippers have these uh, little machine screw uh, shears on them. Uh, right around there somewhere. Does a nice clean job. Beautiful. And now to set it up on the actual panel. Uh, again, like almost everything, this won't be the final installation, but I want to uh, line up the holes uh, because we're coming up on a bit of a complex fit where we have to drill big holes through for the wires to leave the box. So anyway, let's get started right like this. Okay, 
and make sure it's still square. Beautiful. In fact, I'm leaving that friction fit. Uh, it just rubs a little bit on the end, uh, but that works as a latch for now. Okay, everything's nicely lined up. Okay, with the panel back in place, it's time to drill holes through for the main uh, power cables to come in here. Uh, the AC ones will be here, up into the AC circuits. The DC ones will come above. Yes, I'll be abandoning that. Um, I kind of knew I would, but anyway, uh, up into the DC side. And then at the top, I have to drill a hole up here to go through to the instrument panel. Now, I have to be very careful because the boat is narrower behind this bulkhead uh, because it's a flush deck. In other words, that's the outside of the hull right there, but the outside of the cabin is about here. So I'll have to drill through about there. I, I Anyway, let's just start the process. Okay, right about there. That's all I need to get started. I'll finish it up with the pilot. Okay, and here we're gonna go and excellent. Two. Now this one I'm gonna hack a little bit by actually drilling it on an angle. And what that'll do is it'll ease the wires going around that corner. All of these are going to be cut to the back so that I can actually remove um, the box if I need to uh, without having to remove the wires so the wires can stay in place. Let me just line that up here and give that a little turn. There we go. Clean these up a little bit with a little bit of sanding and we're off. back on again okay really really pleased really pleased so I got tons of room for wires to go through which is the main trunk and then this connection up through here here this is lower unfortunately because it has to clear the um, the actual helm console which is lower down but that's okay I like the way the wires are gonna work the way out of there this of course will have a panel over it okay well, I think that's about all I'm going to be able to get done this week. I'm still moving a bit slow, but feeling better every day. But don't go away just yet. We got to talk about... Hey, hello there and welcome to the Travels of Jordy Beer of the Week. Don't go away because this is an extra special, very interesting Travels of Jordy Beer of the Week. And it has something to do with this. Yes! <laughs> Did you notice at the beginning uh, opening sequence? A couple of new t-shirts and hoodies. Well... You may have seen the new graphic on the uh, intro to the uh, videos over the last little while, uh, but now we have all new t-shirts, several new designs, as well as some hoodies and some other stuff I'm really excited to share with you. And they are all thanks to a fine gentleman named Dave O'Malley, a graphic designer from Ottawa. Please give a warm welcome to Dave. How are you, Dave? I'm doing fine here, but it looks beautiful there. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's another beautiful day. To tell you the truth, I'm a little warm in this. But <laughs> well, we're two months behind you in the summer here. All right, it's we're... good. It's good. So, hey, how on earth did you imagine b being so generous to travel with Jordy with with well, all this beautiful graphic I, stuff? Well, I guess it just matches your own personal generosity as well. You know, the pandemic happened, and uh, I got tired of television and a whole bunch of things. And I just, uh, you know, I used to watch YouTube for sort of junk stuff. But I started looking for real content. And uh, I ran into several uh, sites. Uh, Travels with Jordy was my by far my favorite. You're an engaging fellow, and uh, I believe in the project. It's real. The content is amazing. Uh, I felt engaged, and I felt just by watching, I was truly part of a community that you created. And uh, it really helped me through the pandemic. I, uh, and then I reached out to you, uh, you know, and, and asked if there was anything I could do because I was a graphic designer for the past 45 years. And, I'm sure that I could design some pretty sweet merch for you, and, right. and you and I kind of collaborated uh, a few Zoom calls over yeah. the past few months. We collaborated on some ideas, and and I just executed them. It was just an absolute joy to do it, and to see the look on your face when you saw your your beautiful boat in right. a kind of graphic form on various things, and and I, I just yeah. think also your followers. They, they want to see really good merch that they would love to wear, you sure. know, and have nautical feel, and, uh, you know, so I, I just, uh, 
Well, just enjoyed doing this. Well, it it's been really fun. a lot of fun. I mean, folks, we've been working on this since pre pretty much the new year or before, and uh, it's just been so much fun to collaborate with Dave on this stuff. And yeah. uh, I think you'll see the results. And we have a few shirts, but we have to get to a beer. Now, the beer gets even more exciting because not only did Dave set us up with all new shirts, he set us up with a whole pile of beer, which he sent out from Ontario, coming from the um, Vimy uh, Brewing Company in Ottawa. Now, tell us a little bit about these fantastic labels, Dave. Well, the, uh, the, 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 the logo for Vinnie Brewing and all of their cans look the same. They're just different colors depending on the right. beer. Um, but the, the logo is, is a, a symbol based on the hat badge worn by the battalions and regiments of the Canadian Expeditionary Force uh, in the First World War and in particular at Vimy Ridge. And, right. and it's based on a hat badge that my grandfather wore as the, part of the 25th Battalion Nova Scotia Islanders. <laughs> amazing. Very similar hat badge. Oh, yeah. Very amazing. So it was really fun to do it. Yeah. Their, and the beer is great. So you sent me out three beers. Which one are we going to try today? I think we'll, uh, we'll do one at a time over the next little while. Let's, yep. let's start with the red ale. The red? Okay, I'm looking forward to that. The one you... Yep. Okay, well, I'm gonna pour here. You're gonna get pour in there. I'm gonna get pour in. I don't pour as much beer as you, so I probably will get a really nasty head on this. <laughs> well, um, I'm trembling a little bit here. I'm not sure why, because I've been working hard here. Anyway, let's see. Uh, it's so a love. I, I never really drank a lot of beer. Right. And, but recently, thanks to Beer of the Week, <laughs> I drink beer again. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of work, and I really appreciate the Beer of the Week. Right. Days. Okay. Well, I hope I'm not a bad influence. Be perfectly honest. Yeah. I hope you haven't chilled. Yeah. Oh, it's quite cold. It's quite cold. It arrived by courier yesterday, and here it is today. All right. So I'm all set to go. I'm going to cheers you on the screen, and then of course the viewers at home. Cheers. Oh man! Send out a case. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I will. Mm. Oh, that is really, really brilliant. Okay. Yeah, wow. That's great. Yeah, really, really fantastic. Okay, we have to do one little bit of housekeeping before we get onto the shirts, Dave. And that is okay. um, announced last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t shirt, and that's Doug A. So, Doug A, uh, get a hold of me, and we'll make sure you get a coupon for your free Travels with Jordy t shirt. Congratulations, Doug. Okay. So now, um, we got more shirts. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show off just a couple of the other shirts you did. Now, <laughs> it's, some, some people will remember that I tend to say love it, love it, love it a lot. So we have a love it, love it, love it t-shirt, uh, which I really love. Uh, done in this kind of 60s, uh, you know, love child style. I, I, I just, it's fantastic. Comes in a ton of colors. you would love it, love it, love it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then uh, t-shirts with the same new graphic on it. Uh, this particular one I really love. Huh. Um, I think, what do they call this, Dave? Blood, bla black, blood? Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Blood, black or something? Uh, Dave has set up a whole bunch of color combinations, different color graphics on different color shirts. And of course, the hoodie that I'm wearing, and it comes in a bunch and, of different stuff. And this stuff. one too. And there's that one too. Can you turn around, Dave? The MD Jordy, and then on the back, is, can you see that, Peter? Yeah, I can. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a smattering. There's a whole bunch of new stuff. So all of these shirts will be live on the uh, Travels Majority online store as you're watching this. That's if I pull this off tonight. But yes, it'll all be good. Well, we'll have to see if we can squeeze another few minutes of your time for, for some other fun stuff for Travels Majority because it's just been a really pleasant experience working with yeah. you. That's excellent. Okay. You know what we need from you? We need a What's word that? of the week to give away another t-shirt. Okay, well, how about two words together? Okay. Uh, reach out. Reach out. When you follow people right. on the internet, when you when you uh, follow Travels with Jordy, yeah. whatever other places, uh, whatever other YouTubers that you follow, reach out to them or okay. reach out to other people in the community. And I love it. See if you can help. I love Let's it. See if you can help. That's how you establish a community yeah. by people helping each other, not just viewing. But reaching out and helping. That's Someone. fantastic. I really love it. Okay, well, cheers to reach out. And for those of you at home, if you'd love to win a Travels of Jordy t-shirt, and there are quite a few more of them to pick from now, um, please uh, use the words reach out in a comment down below, and we'll set you up with a Travels of Jordy t-shirt. And uh, thanks so much again, Dave.
It's, well, what a pleasure. Thank you, Peter. Oh, well. It's been so much fun and so exciting to work with you and a joy to collaborate. So, well, uh, well, thank well, you. Well, thanks. Cheers thanks you again. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, yeah. And more of this. More of this.